Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a different kind of deck. It's not really blowing up the meta or anything, and its main goal is just to be big and have a lot of high power placed in. So I'm calling it Size Matters, because at the end of the day, Marvel Snap's all about who has the most power in two out of the three locations, and that's what we aim to do. So going over the cards here, we have Forge. Forge is gonna give the next card I play plus two power which is going to synergize really well with a couple of cards in here, and we'll get to those and you'll see why. A Squirrel Girl adds a Squirrel to the other two locations, and they're all one cost, which also synergizes with another card in here called Obsidian, which we'll get to later as well. And Zero, another one drop. Uh, it's a really good one drop at that line of 1-3, and it removes the abilities on the next card you play. Also has some pretty good synergy in the deck later on, and we'll talk about that when we get to those cards. Now, a lot of the power we have are four costs, which Zabu will make three costs. So we want a Zabu in here because we have like four four cost cards. So uh, bringing them down to three costs really allows us to play them early, get some high power early, as well as play two of them in the last turn, putting in a lot of power the last turn that the opponent might not expect. And then we have armor to protect our large cards. There's a lot of Shang-Chi around, as well as some like uh, Gambit's floating around with Clave coming out, the armor's been doing really well, and also counters Destroy List, which is one of the only decks that can maybe get higher than us in power. So it counters the Deadpools and the Venoms and all that. And then Mr. Fantastic, because we want priority. Uh, we want to put power in all the locations and really contest everything. Uh, mostly for one of the other cards in here, Crossbones, it really helps us if we play Mr. Fantastic on three, we can at least play Crossbones on four usually because the opponent hasn't contested all three lanes yet, so Mr. Fantastic's really good in the deck. And then we have Gladiator, which is just a really great restatted card, 3-8, uh, add a card from your opponent's deck to their side of this location, if it has less power, destroy it. Now this is one of those cards we want to forge, when we forge it, it becomes a 3-10 which uh, helps us reduce our Scar. And also it makes him even more powerful. So if we end up pulling an opponent's eight power or nine power card, he'll still destroy it. So he's a very good target. And if we know our opponent has large cards in their deck, like maybe they're playing a Hella deck and they have Infinites and Gigantos and we don't want to risk it, we can also play zero on him and his ability won't trigger, but we'll still get the nice uh, eight power for three. And then we also have Shang-Chi just because again, a lot of high power cards out there, a lot of uh, Hella decks right now with uh, Corvus Glaive, as well as um, a lot of Destroy decks and all playing high power cards. So Shang-Chi just kind of needs to be in every deck right now. So we're going to keep him in here just to kind of flip some lanes that maybe we won't be able to flip otherwise. Crossbones is the card that we wanted Mr. Fantastic for. He can only be played in a location we are winning, and very rarely are we unable to play him. Sometimes we can play him on turn three after Zabu because the opponent hasn't played anything yet, and we just get a nice eight power on the board right away. And he's also another target for Forge, which would bring him up to 10 and help discount our Scar. So the whole thing is just get a lot of 10 power cards on the deck to make our Scar cheaper and for a big turn uh, six that the opponent does not expect. Now, Atuma is just a 410, really great stats. However, if he's played with another card, he'll destroy himself at the end of the turn. So, another reason to include armor so we can play Atuma into the armor lane, as well as uh, Zero. We have Zero, we can play Zero the turn before and play Atuna, Atuma into him, and he doesn't destroy himself, cancels his ability. So, another 10 power card, really good. And then Call Obsidian, the newest uh, 410. You can only play this where you have a one cost card, which is why we run Squirrel Girl and we have uh, Forge and Zero to kind of help get him down on the board. I haven't really struggled getting him down. We always draw one of our one cost by the end of the game, I feel like. So he's always coming down. And again, 10 power is nothing to joke about. And then Scar, he's a 611, costs two less for each of our cards that has 10 or more power. This guy is usually two cost. Uh, by the end of the game, I'm playing him with another four cost, putting down 21 power. Uh, 10 in one lane, 11 in another. It wins a lot of, it surprises people a lot. Sometimes he's free if the curve is just really well the whole game and they don't Shang-Chi any of our cards. So this deck is really good at pumping out a lot of power. We usually have 10 power in every lane by turn like four or five and the opponent has to decide what they're starting to do. Uh, it's just a really good solid deck. Um, and we're gonna bring it into ladder and see how it does. All right, we got two rog. I don't know how to say that. 
They got a rock. Armor Shang-Chi and Scar. Not bad. We got zero. We're going to go ahead and skip. I don't want to zero the armor. Now, Shang-Chi and armor kind of... Oh, Elysium. Wow. Um, Shang-Chi and armor don't synergize well together because they can play their big cards into our armor. But we'll play our big cards into our armor and kind of contest that, so I'm not too worried about it. I kind of want to rip the Gladiator and just kind of see what happens. Yeah, let's rip Gladiator left side. Minions to me. If I snap, they retreat. Should I do it? Doom's gone. Jubilee's gone. Yeah, they're not going to be very happy here. Asgard, all right, not bad. So we could zero into the cull, but I'm not really feeling that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and snap. They can't be too happy about losing their Hela. I don't want them to retreat, but maybe they have something in their hand they're feeling confident about. Because they got their Corvus, they got their ramp. So maybe they'll do some like, oh, Spider Woman, okay. They want to win that. Miniaturized Lab, that's not bad. So I'm thinking we'll go ahead and do this. We, I want to wanna win Asgard, I want to take that. We're adding 13 power, they have to add another 8 there. The only thing I can see them doing is maybe uh, Odin. Magneto, but then we win it. So I'm not even mad about that. They still got a contest there. Our scars three. We can still add more power there with Mr. Fantastic, which I think I want to do. Mm. I think I'm just going to play the scar out now, as well as the Mr. Fantastic. We can hold on to the forge. Sandman, I'm glad we played out a bunch of stuff. Oh, they're not going to win this. There's no way. Because now we just play big into Miniaturized Lab. All right, we can't play too big into Miniaturized Lab. Let's see, can I at least beat Dr. Doom? I need to add nine power here. Oh, right, we only have... Oh, they retreated. <laughs> Uh, starting to sweat a little bit, but they retreated, so all is good. A lot. The Silver Couch Surfer. A pretty cool avatar. Okay, we're just going to end turn. We're going to Zabu into probably Gladiator. I don't want to play a Tuma uh, unless I have like an armor or a zero. We got the zero. So I'm actually going to Zabu in Asteroid M. I want to fill that up because a lot of my cards are going to get dragged in there. Which I don't want. Mm. I wonder if I want to play multiple gladiators though. Like, should I copy my gladiator, pull something, destroy it, get dragged middle? Just in case. Maybe he has a small deck. Compared to my my big deck. Yeah, get rid of that scroll. I don't know what you're planning there. Another Zabu, okay. Howard. I'm assuming a Spectrum deck. Okay, so I'm gonna zero into a Tuma. I wonder if I wanna copy zero, or maybe I wanna play zero here so I can play my Obsidian. But I will be copying my Atuma, just in case. I like having a lot of... And it's going to be zeroed out, even the copy. Okay, so I know what to expect there. That's a lot of power. If you guys weren't feeling the Shang-Chi, I would recommend a Rogue. Rogue would also be good. A lot of ongoing cards going on here. Okay. This is kind of tough because I don't have anything to stop it from going mid. Maybe I should have played zero there. Mm. 
Do I want it? I don't think I need to thin the deck anymore. I think I just go... The Tuma, call it a day. Next turn will be... Leech. That's not good for Scar. Dang, it's really not good for Scar. I was gonna do such a good play. I wonder if I do this. Because there's no way they win middle. They reveal first, so they have to add... Oh, what if they play around... Shang-Chi? Is it better if I just put 20 power here? Do we think they're going to play left or right? They're probably going to play both, right? So I'm probably just better off doing this. I think 22 power putting me at 26. So they have to add 15 power here. I'm not going to snap, but I think this wins. Do they put enough power mid? Oh. <laughs> All right, it's a good thing we did not go with the Shang-Chi play. But look, see, power they don't expect. They leeched us. Love a good little leech. Doesn't really affect anything with this deck because it's just big power. Atuma loves to be leeched. Call Obsidian too, to be honest. You know, all these cards don't mind being leeched. Crossbones could have been played without priority. Roldy. My old nemesis, oh no. Okay, so... Oh, look at that, an Atuma. Love to see it. So we don't necessarily have to Squirrel Girl right now. I mean, we could. We could just get it out there. And then Call is not an issue, but I think we could also wait. There's not much going on. Asgard, featured location. Okay, now that we have Call, I think I want a Squirrel Girl. Do I want to zero? If I zero anything, I want to zero the Atuma, not the Gladiator. So I'm actually going to hold off on that. Oh. Scarlet Witch. Into Morag. Honestly, this deck, even though it's like big, does not mind Morag. We're going to Gladiator Asgard. Let's see what we pull here. Sentinel. All right, we just filled their hand for them a little bit. Are we looking at C3? Oh, okay, so Mobius is a little problematic. Uh, actually, I think it's a, just Crossbones mid, right? Yeah, just Crossbones mid. See what I mean? We have no problem getting Crossbones down, and now we have 18 power there, which is just insane. Yeah, so he's definitely C3. I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, so we're going to zero into a Tuma here. I'm also going to snap. I would have snapped a little earlier while I was playing the crossbones. I just didn't think about it. You always want to snap on like turns three and four. Those are the best. Opponents are usually willing to stick it out in case they can draw something better. Turn five isn't awful, but there's sometimes a little bit more iffy on it. And definitely don't snap on turn six if you're going to win. Uh, they will retreat. Okay, so let's see. I'm expecting them to play Mystique. So Mystique makes everything 7. So 7, 14, I'm expecting like 21 power here. Mm. And then 7, 14, 21 power here. Not sure how to go about this. Hmm. Where would they play the Mystique is the real question. Would they Mystique? No, they can't Mystique mid. They would go to Mystique left. So left is only going to go up to um, 7, 14, 15. So I'm thinking... That seems like an overkill. Do I want Mr. Fantastic anywhere? Do we think maybe this? We're going to do that. This is weird, but I'm going to do it. They avoided middle. I should have used Forge on Zabu. What? 
If I forged Zabu, we would have won. Dang. Misplayed with the forge. I panicked because my timer was going down. And they have the Shang-Chi. I expected the Mystique. If I didn't think they were going to Mystique, I would have played this slightly different as well. Would have definitely committed to my uh, Morag play with Call Obsidian. PKS Joey B. All right, Adelan, not bad. This deck kind of sucks for Adelan, unless I can draw like Zabu and get things down. Damn, I almost want to just temple play the Zero, but the Atuma, you know? And I like when Gladiator destroys stuff. It gives me a little boost of serotonin. Ooh, Central Park, we'd love to see it. All right, we're gonna Gladiator, see what happens. If anything, we clog him a little bit, right? Oof. That's rough. That's less rough, but still rough. All right. I think I just go here. They snapped, which that's fair. They should snap. Vision. Dang, okay. Maybe Shang-Chi would have been the play. Hold on, 2-4. Ooh, that puts him at 9. We gotta play smart here. Do I just rip the Shang-Chi? 2-4-6 keeps him at 11. Or do I hold the Shang-Chi for... I'm gonna hold the Shang-Chi in case they... Do, um... Oh, okay, thank you. My issue now is the Ronin will always be under nine. Well, they have priority. Do we think this ever wins? If they move vision, let's see, he's gonna have seven. He loses four, he loses 12. He goes down to 10. So they can't, if they move vision, they have to play there. But if they move vision right, we lose. I'm willing to stick it out and see what happens. We win tiebreaker? I'll take it. Any day, all day. A grilled cheese, as Binks would call it. Look at that. Yeah, I'll give you Nux. That was good. GG, dude. Grilled cheese by one point. Steve, TM. The one and only. All right, Steve. Uh, we have Call Obsidian, so let's go ahead and rip the Squirrel Girl. Let's see, I'm thinking Squirrel Girl into Armor Mr. Fantastic. Not all in Asgard. Weird world. Ah, so much for playing my deck. That's fine. Maybe they'll draw crossbones and then they can't do anything. And then they'll play gladiator and pull out my, uh, I don't know, car. Castle Blackstone, nice. Don't mind if I do. So, with that, do I want to just put out the Call Obsidian? I think so. I don't want to play it into Castle Blackstone. He needs to be in the armor because they might have my Shang-Chi. Okay, come on, Scar. That's good. They don't have my Shang-Chi. So now I know that for everything else. Scar, I guess I'll go here with him. I'm gonna snap. This is going good. I'm going pretty good. I'm quite content with the plays going on here. We're gonna get draw. We're potentially gonna get energy. Maybe he's gonna. He's probably gonna fight for Castle Blackstone to keep the energy coming. Is this my scar or his scar? Hold on. That's his scar. Oh, because he's hella. Yeah, he's gonna. Have Big cards. Oh, and we overtook that. Nice. Oh, and now we have his Shang-Chi. So I don't even have to worry about it. Um, What's the plan here? We think he has Hela. Should I just Sarah? I think I just Sarah. 
Is it even worth? What if I do this? This feels pretty good. I already snapped, right? And then next turn, I can Chongxi or and Blade or just Giganto. We'll see what happens. Oh, I can't Giganto. Duh. I'm Lady Sif Sifting it. You're gonna Gladiator me again? Thank you. Atuma, okay. Let's see what I draw here. My own Zabu. Love it. Alright, uh, Shang-Chi doesn't do anything. Unfortunately. I think I add three power here anyway. And then just go try to tie or just tie middle. Win tiebreaker. What could he be doing? Let's see. He has my scar. It costs four. He has two more energy, so he would have to play mid. So I'm thinking actually we go bigger here, a little bit here, and see what happens. If he wins, then it's still my deck winning, so it's still a good showcase of my, my deck. I didn't have priority, the Shang-Chi would be a lot more meaningful. Oh, he retreated. Victory. He must have been like, what the heck is this guy playing? <laughs> Dang, even with half of the cards not being ours, we managed to pull it out. AG3. Loving the Loki avatar. Okay, not a bad hand. Ooh, Rickety Bridge. Rickety Bridge is good if I pull armor. I think that's the goal here. Maybe sneak it with armor later. Definitely gonna Zabu now. Uh, hopefully I draw something I can play. Falcon, what do you... Why are you falconing now? Are you just tempoing it out? You got nothing else going on? I almost just want to snap. What if I put Atuma here, force him to destroy it so it revives in Valley of the Hand? How do we feel about that? You're right. I don't like it too much. Yeah, we'll just zero into a two mile. Oh, he's destroying the forge anyway. Okay, he's got some draw. It's good for him. Does bounce decks do bounce decks run? Um, what's it called? Shang Chi. I don't even know. Okay, werewolf. We drew the armor. I think I just play out the armor. For them to Shang-Chi still commits, you know, a lot of energy somewhere. I mean, he's got Shang-Chi. He's snapping back, right? That's usually a pretty good tell. I'm doing the cycle play of armoring Rickety instead of my, my big cards. I'm expecting armor mid. Eh, you thought. Oh, he's got his own call. Interesting, interesting. Did not expect... So, the werewolf has to move. This is awkward. This might actually be better than crossbones. So adds five middle with Mr. Fantastic. Adds... Four here. One, three here. He's giving up Valley of the Hand. I'm not even worried about that. So maybe I add even more power. No, because the plus three on the squirrel is a bunch more power. So I'm going to do that. He gave up Rickety Bridge. Oh, there's the Shang-Chi. How much power did he... Shoot, I should have played the Crossbones. Would crossbones have one? Glo Globin's leg? Globine's leg? Top 1700. All right. Mm, we're going to hold. I think. 
Expansion might give us a weak card. I don't want to have weak cards on weak cards. I will make multiple copies of armor, though. I think multiple copies of armor is good for my deck. Daredevil. So there's some sort of lockdown deck. So I can expect the Professor X turn 5. So I gotta be careful of that. Let's go ahead and armor here and... Uh... Yeah, let's go here. And we'll zero the Atuma next turn. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. An interesting place for that. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll take it. Heck yeah. Let's make a copy of Atuma. Next turn we can Atuma into X Mansion and Squirrel Girl, maybe. Or we just Atuma again, regardless. Without Squirrel Girl. Let's see, Sunspot. What kind of deck are they playing? I don't know what's going on. I'm worried they're going to try to Professor X me. Which they can't if I... Atuma. The reason I don't want to play the Squirrel Girls because I don't want to lose the eight... Uh, the five extra power here. Forcing them that they can't... Professor X there. And Jeff and Professor X only go to four there together. I'm gonna snap and then I'm gonna go. So they can... See that I'm not afraid of their Daredevil. You know? It took a while for it to go through just to be there. I wonder why. I'm like, they still gotta play their turn. I don't know why I didn't just immediately go to their turn. I'll notice that. Kinda like hung out for a second. Maybe it's because I snapped and did like that auto timer where it gives them to retreat. Because that doesn't put into consideration Daredevil. That's my guess. Alright, so this Atuma is going to make our Scar cost 2, so next turn we can literally Scar and Mr. Fantastic. Or Scar and Crossbones. We have a lot of options, a lot of power. I think Scar mid, uh, Crossbones right would be best. If we feel we need more power in Expansion, we can Mr. Fantastic mid and Scar right. We'll see, it depends what they do. They can't Galactus us either. Oh no, they can Galactus us. They're not giving Galactus vibes, though. Yeah, they're giving retreat vibes, that's for sure. GG, Globin, Slag. There you have it, size matters. So they put a lot of big power on the board. Get rid of some other big power with Shang-Chi. Keep your power safe with armor. Keep priority with Mr. Fantastic. It's a good deck. It uh, surprises opponents, I feel like. They usually don't expect these types of cards to be played because it's not really meta. Like, a lot of people aren't using these cards together. But I think that they work really well, and it's good to always surprise your opponent, keep them guessing. If they don't know what you're going to play, you usually win. Uh, it's because they can't really counter or play against it. Let me know what you guys think of the deck down below, if you guys would swap any of these cards out. Again, if you don't want to run the Shang-Chi because of the armor tech, you could always do Rogue. I think Rogue is a good inclusion. Uh, Crossbones could be swapped out for uh, Warpath, maybe. It's a naturally 10 power card when you have an empty lane, which you could play that way where you just want to win two lanes anyway. Thought about that as well, but I, I liked giving Forge a couple of targets that become 10 power, like Gladiator and Crossbones. Uh, there's a few others, um, and I like all the four costs that can be three costs energy. Uh, you could put things in there that are five costs, like I don't know, Red Skull for the zero, and it's another card that discounts the Scar. But it felt too, like, cost-heavy without any discounts, so I didn't really like that too much. Uh, but it feels pretty solid as is. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it, what you would replace, and if you guys end up using it, how you do. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, dislike it, but I'd prefer you didn't. And if you're going to subscribe to somebody, why not Tony? And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!